Hey guys, welcome to this week's What Women Binge. And I am geeking out because I binge all of this young lady's wonderful Instagram feeds and family stuff in our book. This is Jessica G, who Ooh. is the mother of all bucket list of all of all global wanderers because she's literally raising global wanderers. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. I can't I honestly I can't really believe I'm talking to you right now. So I am <laughs> If you would have told my 10-year-old self who I'd be chatting with, I never would have believed you. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. And I have followed you for like years now as you grew your family and wandered the world and settled down a little bit in Hawaii and like, but we met through, well, I mean, I got your number through Derek Huff, right? Of yeah. Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Yep. So that's so fun. You guys like do a lot of traveling with him. We love, we, they're just our go-to travel buddies. They love wildlife. A lot of our travels have kind of evolved into wildlife and they, Haley, especially they're, well, they're both obsessed with wildlife. So that's I'm been actually common. really, really jealous. Cause I'm like, why can't I be your travel buddy? Because this is like what I try to do with my kids, but I can't do it at the level you do. Cause we don't I volunteer here's tribute. Yes. Come on. <laughs> I'm planning you. a trip for us to China for the summer to go see the panda bears. So with no Derek and Haley and it should be a lot of fun. So let wow. me know and I'll add you in. <laughs> I would the love The brain is basically you. panda. Oh yeah, she calls her husband the panda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you do? He's, oh my gosh. I'm he's gonna close to a, 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 Oh, he's basically the human version of a panda. He hates when I say that, but it's true. He's, <laughs> he's also the brain. So if we ever need to call any information or Google something, he's here with us. So we can just call for the brain and the brain will tell us what we need to know. I love it's like a that. magic ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wait. I have to explain. Sorry. I have this like weird yellow thing back here. Amanda and I last week did mother son dodgeball at our school and my team's the yellow team. So I was in this crazy wig and like all this, all this. I love that you have it set up back there. Two twos everywhere. Well, that's to go back up on my shelf with my wigs, but so I, haven't, I have to climb up there and I haven't done that's it yet. So, so fun. Just, okay. But you, you have big kids. You don't have little kids anymore. Your kids are high school. I do right? now. Yeah. I mean, that's my fourth grader. It, it was his mother son dodgeball was, yeah. Cause I wouldn't play that with okay. my 18 year old. He <laughs> would take my head off. <laughs> just get <give> his work. <laughs> yeah. It was They're my now last year. Me. My fifth grader. And all, it's when we first started doing dodgeball with our kids through elementary school, you know, they start out so little and you're like, Oh, I feel bad about hitting them with these dodgeballs. It's so, it feels so wrong. And then by the time they reached the fifth grade, like mine did this year, it was my last one. I was like, I'm going to get him. Oh, I, I told my son, I was like, you better giants. watch out. <laughs> We're coming for Wait, you. So is this like, is this like an annual tradition at your kid's school? Mm -hmm. At our school. Yeah. So oh, the fathers do like the father daughter fun. dance and then the moms do the mother son dodgeball. So. Ooh, I love that. I love yeah, that. I have a, a PTO meeting tonight. I might, I might suggest that. That's so, it's really I don't know. Fun. I also feel like, I also feel like the teachers would be like, wait, you want to do what? You want to hit? You well, <laughs> the dodgeball. Yes. Please let me hit my kid. The dodgeballs um, are really soft. They're not that. Yeah. 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 Super, yeah. They don't hurt. Super spongy. They don't even throw. It's very frustrating because you try to throw them and they like, they yeah, don't yeah, go yeah. <laughs> not like the dodgeballs I grew up with that were hitting you in the face and like really hard. The rubber, the rubber ones. Yeah. The rubber ones. Yes. Like the playground balls. That was yeah, like, you don't, those like are vicious. Balls. Yeah, that's like those Gaga ball now or something, right? I don't know. Wait, that's so just they do in the playpen. That's Gaga, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a big thing in the Northeast. Uh, I think everyone was putting Gaga pits in their school. So I don't, I don't know, like pickleball. I don't understand it. I just don't get it yet. Yeah, I'm sure I will someday. <laughs> pickleball but. is fun. Pickleball, <laughs> like fast. tennis with a wiffle ball. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah, it's the greatest. It's like a giant ping pong paddle and a wiffle ball. And I don't know what it is about it, but it is so fun. But the hardest part it about is it is scoring. Isn't it scoring is like the hardest part? It's I have just, no yeah, idea how the, to the hardest part is to learn how to keep score because there's like three scores and you take turns with a partner. So you say like, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to say because <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong, but it is fun. Cool. And, and maybe in a couple of years, that's going to be my like go to, go to hobby. I think it's awesome. There you go. So wait, I want to hear more. So you said PTO meeting. Um, are what how like how are your kids I assume they were like homeschooled or like are, how are you yeah, how do you uh, so our kids are in school they go to a private school that has been really really great I will say our kids are still at a younger age my oldest is in fifth grade and we're, we're approaching the very tough to take them out of school age with her I mean we're there um but you know we just got back from a month in Antarctica and I told my, the, my kids school at the very beginning of the year we're taking a month off 
we're going to be learning a ton. And they were so supportive. They were so kind. They yeah. were so supportive. Um, and so we've been really lucky with that aspect, but homeschooling, not for me. Um, so when we, you know, we stopped traveling full time when my daughter was in fifth grade and going into kindergarten and she wanted to be in a school and she craved it. And so we found Hawaii and we decided to settle down here and, uh, we love it. So just travel on school holidays. It's private school. You says private school. school, Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So there may be a little, yeah, it's interesting. I was, I see, I learned about taking them out. I I was never the type of parent that was like everyday attendance is the most important thing. But, you know, I try to make sure my kids have a good routine and that kind of thing. But I'm not that mom. Sure. Amanda's like, I'll just be home today and make popcorn. I love it. She's like, arts and crafts day. Yeah. Um, I, I, but- I'm all about, you need a mental health day? All right, cool. What you, what you want to make? Where you want to go? <laughs> See, and I, I take them out mainly for travel or like, you know, family, like mainly like going somewhere with the family. But like the first time I tried to do it was probably 2017. I was going on a to a Comic-Con in Australia. And I remember like, telling my friends about a year in advance that I was going to take my kids like that. I had to go for two weeks. So I might as well just make it a month and take the kids and go into Sydney. And I want yeah. to take them to the Whit Sundays. And, um, yeah. and then but I had to go to Adelaide and Perth. And I was like, I want to do all, I want to do all of it. And if we're going down there, we're going to, we're going to do it. Yeah. And my, everyone like panicked about, you can't take your kids. I was, how are you going to do that? And then it was interesting because I had a lot of people kind of come to me and say, you know what, well, after, especially after it was over. So I actually unenrolled them from, I was going to unenroll them from school, but it ended up over like spring break and a testing week. So it yeah. was kind of like two weeks that they didn't out. have school. Yeah. yeah. So they missed like nine days of real school, I think. But it was funny because other parents then came to me and were like, you know, I spent so much time like and money, like traveling with my kids to small nearby towns for travel baseball and putting all this money and time into this. I wish I had taken them out a little bit more, done a little bit more with them. And so I took that as a lesson of like, okay, I got to do this as much as I can. Um, so we take them as often as we can. I mean, now that they're in high school, it's, I mean, you can take them out, I think still through middle school, but high school, once that permanent record starts and those GPAs become important, that's, but then again, the experiences your kids have had, will be so valuable on their resume for college if they want to go to college that it doesn't even, I feel like it doesn't even matter, like GPAs well, and whatnot. Now we are at that stage though, where, you know, when we left last month, like they, they missed Valentine's day part. Valentine's day is like the best day of school. You know, they missed dances, they missed sporting events that my daughter missed a soccer tournament. So like they're bummed to miss out on stuff. And it's such a mom guilt thing, which I get it. Like we're out with the penguins and we're having the most incredible experiences you know, and I don't, but I, at the end of the day, like my kids, they miss, they miss home and they miss friends. That's and they miss really, so it's, yeah. So you're trying to settle down a little bit more for them, but still keep, yeah, I mean, yeah, there. yeah. So yeah, just giving them a bigger say in where we're going, you know, and as we're planning this summer, we're literally having the conversation last night. Do we go to the GoPro games, which would be awesome. Or do we go on this Disney cruise that we've been invited, invited on? And, you know, and they're like, oh, geez, that's tough. Like, what do we do? Like, those are both really cool options. And in those cases, do you guys, do you always try to find somewhere new or are they often pushing for you to go to somewhere you've already been? Um, my husband and I are trying to go to new places, but my kids, you know, they want to, they want to go back to places. They, they've loved a few places. My daughter wants to go back to Japan and my son, mm. yeah, he's, he sounds so pretentious, but he's like, I just want to go to the Maldives. That's all he wants. He wants to go to the Maldives. <laughs> well, I, I get that. Him. We're actually, my son for his 18th, for graduating, we were like, where do you want to go? You get to pick the trip this year. And he chose Fiji, which we've already been to, which I was kind of like, yeah. everyone knows what to expect. Like last year or yeah. Christmas, we did Guatemala and we've done Costa Rica and like always trying to find new, pl- we have a big, um, do you guys have like a huge map on the wall where you pin and all? We, we used to, we don't anymore. But yeah, so we have our big map and I love to stand there and it used to be above our kitchen table in our old house. And we just like, look at it and be like, where should we go next? We haven't really traveled to South America yet or, you know, like Asia and like looking at stuff like that. But, and I'm the one that more wants to do that. But in this case, like, I'm kind of excited that we're all going somewhere familiar because also they give me such crap now about where I'm choosing or what time it, like it's Christmas time and you want to go to Guatemala where it's hot, but we want to ski and what are you doing to, you know, like that kind of thing. So no, we're, we're approaching the opinionated children age and, and now they're like, where are we going? Why are we going here? Why would you plan it this way? And I'm like, okay, all right, well, you guys are going to start having more work, you know, in, in this, yeah. in this whole planning stuff. Make one of them a it, it'll agent. be a fun, yeah, it'll be a fun chapter as, as they can start really like helping me plan stuff. So how, tell me their ages again. 
So we have Dorothy, she's 11, and then we have Manila, who's nine, and Callahan, who's six. Okay. Oh, six already. Yeah. Isn't that Baby crazy? Is the I, mean, I was just watching your videos at, over the weekend, getting ready for today. And I mean, I followed you on Instagram and YouTube over the years, but just catching up and making sure like I could have a real conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, but watching your kids grow up online is so, that's what a phenomenal baby book you've created for them. Oh, oh totally. Is, totally. All right. I mean, yeah. so I'm only so grateful for people. these. I'm so grateful for my husband. He's just this avid journal keeper. He always has been. I actually, he, I have this book that he wrote in his journal, like on his little Blackberry every single day when we were dating. And then when we got engaged, he printed it out like in a hard bound, you know, and this is kind of, you know, pre-social media stuff. So he's always been this avid journal keeper. Oh, and he's so, he, he's so like hopeless, romantic, like mushy. Like I saw Jessica today and she was wearing this and that. And she said this and it made me feel I'm that. So I'm jealous. like, that's so like what? Awesome. There's no way I wasn't gonna marry that man. Not and he's that's so that. cute too. Can that's, we talk about how cute he is? Yeah, he's cute. <laughs> well, that doesn't it, that little mushy said. I wish that I wish that still existed. Sometimes when he's like, "What do you want for your birthday?" I'm like, "I want my boyfriend Garrett back just for like a day, just a little <laughs> mushy, obsessed oh with my me." God. My birthday's a, my birthday's yeah. tomorrow, and I am going to use that. That's what I want for my birthday. Is my uh, my boyfriend, my boyfriend like, back? Your boyfriend so back. Good. That is one so day. Cool. Yeah. Oh I love my that. gosh. It's hard when you're a parent, right? And you're like busy and oh, like I get it's it. May and I get it. And he just whatever he puts his, you know, focus into, whether that was me or soccer or his app that he sold or the bucket list, you know, like whatever he does, he goes ten thousand percent. And for nine months that was me. So I had no choice but to marry the guy. He was an incredible boy. Wow. No kidding. Wait, so let's talk about, so you have your new book through National Geographic. You put out a yeah. book and uh, where can people, people can find that on your website, right? Yeah, you can find our website really anywhere books are sold. And it's, uh, it's just called the bucket. Is it called bucket list family? I know it's I have called, it, but I don't have it here. It's have called, it. uh, it's called bucket list family travel, uh, travel. share the world on 50 adventures of a lifetime with your children. So it's Beautiful. half of it is anything and everything. Oh, thank you. Half of it is anything and everything you need to know about traveling with family how to pack, what to pack, what not to pack, how to plan, how to budget. Um, and then the whole second half is 50 bucket list itineraries, places all over the world that you can That's go through. Awesome. So in the very beginning of it, you talk a, a lot about like how you guys got started being the bucket list family. Can you yeah. give us a quick little synopsis of yeah. your, your uh, origin story? Yeah. Get, well, so Garrett and I met, um, we actually met on our church missions. We were in Russia and then we went to BYU in Utah. That's where we started dating and got married. Garrett was, um, he's always been an artist. And he kind of, when we got home from Russia, it was like kind of very beginning of the app world tech booms, that sort of stage. And he wanted to create an app. He created an app called Scan with some buddies just as a college project. Ended up selling that to Snapchat. So, you know, here we were these 28 year olds coming into money and didn't know what was next in life. We moved out to LA, worked at Snapchat for a minute. And then um, Garrett wanted to go back to school because he wanted to play soccer. He was a collegiate soccer player and that was his everything. And so we went back, but the, the, the compromise was, okay, you can go back and play one more year of soccer if I choose what we do next. And I was the one who said, I want to do a little bit of traveling. And those were the famous last words, the little bit of traveling. <laughs> Just a and, little. And, and I'm the I'm the super moderate one. My I call myself the queen of extreme uh the queen of moderation. My husband's the king of extreme. So I'm like, <laughs> let's do a little bit of traveling and you know, go take off for three, four months. And then Garrett is, let's sell everything and you know, I'll create an Instagram and YouTube. So I was very much on a family vacation, but I think Garrett from the very beginning kind of had this sort of thing in mind, you know, and it was 2015. So I, it was kind of like the mommy blogger era, not quite uh -huh. social media era quite yet. Um, so I feel like he um, did a really good job of kind of forcing a little bit of this influencer, travel influencer work and what that looked like. And I think you guys were the first ones I ever, I ever saw, like first travel influencers that I was watching because, you know, having kids and stuff too, there wasn't a lot to watch of people kind of doing it right with their kids, you know, not just like totally. a vacation actually having these adventures and teaching, like making it a learning experience. Yeah. So he, uh, you know, created the YouTube, like I had mentioned very much in part of just a family journal. 
And then when we came home after about three, four months, we had agreed we would, you know, both kind of decide independently, is this right for us? And much to my, so I mean, Garrett's a yes man. He's going to say yes to no. <laughs> um, but much to my surprise, I was the one who was like, actually, I like this lifestyle. I like living out of a suitcase. I like spending my days with my children and seeing new things. So we had kind of, you know, when we sold everything, we made about $45,000. Uh, we had told ourselves we weren't going to spend any of the money from the acquisition. That was all put aside in savings and investments. And then once our $45,000 was up, we were going to be done and, you know, figure out where we wanted to buy a house and live real big kid life. And um, <laughs> right when that, right when, I think our timing was just so prime because right when the $45,000 was, was running out, our audience was growing and I had started reaching out to hotels and airlines and tourism boards and they had started hosting us. So I feel like the timing was so perfect. And my background's in marketing in business. And I, I went into school, I wanted to do product placement in movies. That was what I wanted to do. Oh, and yeah. now I just, now I just do it in my life. And, uh, yeah. but Garrett, <laughs> but Garrett, his, his, his design skills come in so handy and he's learned how to take photos and videos and he's become so great at it. And most of, most of the photos in the book, when we, when we signed with National Geographic, they're like, okay, it'll be half photos, half National Geo photos and half your photos. And it's, I mean, it's probably 90% Garrett's photos. Like he, they really? were so, they were so impressed. They're beautiful. It, it turned out so nice. He crushed it. And he's really proud of himself that he can say he's a Nat Geo photographer now. <laughs> <laughs> he should, he should. Yeah. And that makes so much sense. Like pulling from those strengths that you guys had, like him in the app world and like knowing um, you know, knowing about kind of the, the technology angle of how to promote something or brand something and totally. then you would marketing, what a great like marriage. Yeah. Like, work it and, really and was. Our skills work very, very well together. Um, and we've, yeah, we've worked well together for years. I, I, <laughs> I like wouldn't recommend going into business with your spouse, but, uh, <laughs> it, it's worked okay for us. <laughs> Amanda and I dabble in working with our husbands, but not full, like, I basically go to my husband's gym. That's kind of how I now dabble. Oh, in okay. <laughs> well, he was not been uh, to watch this, so I can't yeah. do anything. We're yeah. we're partners in almost everything we do. Yeah. No. So and what's your experience? Oh, it's great. He's my best friend, so you can't. Yeah. It doesn't get you better. That he's on here. He's on here. So she has. He's, he's watching. He's so. listening right now. But no, well, it's I would. True. They actually are. They actually are. I think for me, like our our skill sets complement each other so well. Mm -hmm. But I would say our work ethic is just different. I'm like, mm -hmm. I think I grew up with a dad who was the nine to five and I just want to turn off yeah. um, mm -hmm. and, and, and have that off switch. And Garrett is nonstop forever. That, I would say that's true for us too. Logan is definitely, okay. I mean, a 24 hour a day worker. Like, yeah, it's, and he, loves, he loves it, right? Yes. Like that's he loves what, that's what he, he wants to do. Mm. My husband and I noticed on our first anniversary, we were in Spain and uh, we had been in Barcelona and I had made the list. I've gotten like the list of like the 10 things to do in Barcelona, like have a cup of, you know, have a little, uh, cappuccino at this place where Picasso used to go and then go to the Catrigats and go over here. Right. And I was like doing all that. And then, um, and then he, w once we got through Barcelona and he put up with my list, but he was like rolling his eyes the whole time we went down to Marbella and we had a day planned to golf. And then that was it. So we sat on the beach. I think I drank like one sangria or something. I think I picked up my book, read two pages and went, all right, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? He's like, what are you talking about? We just got here. We got to sit. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't like the sun. I sand is gross. Um, I'm not really going to get in the water. So what do we, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And he's like, are you kidding me right now? Like chill out. And right there we were like, we are just very different when we're in vacation. Mode. Oh my gosh. 100%. You got to travel with your significant other before you, before yes. you lock it in. Cause yes. people are different travelers. Yes. Yeah. Until I got have there, a, sit on the country. beach under my umbrella, nap, read, watch the kids play. I can do that now. Getting Logan older, is like a kid. 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to go get in that water now. <laughs> I used to have <laughs> like, a little bit of an itch, but now I'm like, my husband's taking me away for my birthday to these treetop domes in Chattanooga. And so I'm mm. kind of excited to like read my book. And our friends are coming to meet us. But then I was like, oh, I'm going to read my book. We might talk about our relationship or something fun like that. But like, just gonna chill, which is the first thing I'm actually excited to chill. But now our friends are coming, and I was like, "Ooh, now we're gonna be laughing a lot, probably drinking a little." Like now, it's like it yeah. changes the dynamic it's, for sure. So, Amanda, you know how it's really hard to find the perfect T-shirt. It can be such a challenge. 
Like I've had problems, whether it's the fit or the quality, it's really, really, really hard to find the perfect t-shirt. But do you know where I found one? That you're about to say Skims. With our best friends at Skims. <laughs> We've got some great t-shirts. It's They're amazing from crop silhouettes to long sleeve layering tees. There's a style for everybody. My personal favorite is the soft smoothing seamless t-shirt. It goes under everything, like everything. I've that been rocking the boyfriend stuff. t-shirt in Onyx. That's been my go-to. I, I seriously wear this thing every day under blazers, under jackets, uh, by itself. It, we're, we're now in the spring. It's getting warmer. And this thing, you're just going to see it on repeat day after day. I also have my cotton jersey t-shirt in Kynite. And I mean, it's it fits like a dream. It's just, I can't stop wearing the shirt. It's so soft. It. I don't know. It hides everything in a in a good way, you know. Because <laughs> uh, you know, post winter, I might be looking a little fluffier than I was before. But I feel like it smooths everything out. It just makes everything lay right. I look good in my jeans. I look good in my leggings. It's my fave. Well, and all of our all of our listeners can shop at Skims in the t-shirt shop at Skims.com. Now available in sizes XXS. That's extra extra small. All the way to four X. And you get free shipping on orders over seventy five dollars. And so if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show, that's What Women Binge, in the drop-down menu that follows. And we will see you all soon. Thanks, Skims, for sponsoring What Women Binge. For sure. Every trip is so different. But yeah, uh, it, it's hard. to. That's why we really do like traveling with Derek and Haley because they've, they're kind of at our same pace where we go, go, go. But then at the same time, like when we need a nap in the middle of the day or need to just, I mean, we work on the road, so... Yeah. We, yeah. We so tell me about that. Then. Like when you're, when you're, because you have this huge platform right now and you're doing, you did the book and you have a YouTube channel and you have an Instagram page, like how, how does that content get created? Like, or do you have a team that travels with you? Do you have nannies, teachers? Anything no, like- I, I, I think actually when we first left, we brought a nanny with us and very quickly realized it just wasn't for us. We like to just have our own space. I think, I think, the, I think at the core, Garrett and I are both kind of control freaks and we don't really want to like, you know, cater to others. So yeah. uh, we just, we travel alone. Occasionally we'll have a nanny. If like, you know, we went to Rwanda with the gorillas, we had somebody with us or if we go to Tonga with the whales and sometimes, I mean, now the kids come out with us, but when they were younger, we had bring somebody with us occasionally maybe once a year. Um, but now it's, um, it's just us and it's just my husband, um, which I also really like. I, I had a hard time. And I still have a hard time having my kids behind somebody else's camera. Um, so it's just dad. And then dad is the editor. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, it, it's, it's just us. We have one gal who kind of helps do some business management and all of that stuff. And she's amazing, helps us with our contracts and stuff. And, but for the most part, it's just, it's just us, just the three of us now. That's wow. Awesome. That's really amazing. That's hard to do. That's a lot of work too. It's so lot. much work. It's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> I I've told my say. husband for years and years to get an editor, but he, again, is, he wants the family memories and it's his journal. So he's like, why would I give somebody else my journal? Well, it makes that brand cleaner, right? Like I have a hard it time. Does. Like, I can't have an assistant or anything. Cause I'm like, uh, they, no one will do it the way I want to do it. You know, and nobody I mean, cares I guess, as much as you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or has the same vision. And when you're like living it and you want to display it in a way, you know, like you totally that and it probably just keeps your brand really clean and nice. Like, you know, it does, it it does, but it all, you know, a lot of it sits on Garrett's shoulders. So anytime there's any project, it's, it goes through my husband, which is a lot on him. I know that. So I have to, so, okay. Oh my gosh. I have so many questions. (laughs) Let's start with sunscreen. You and I are very fair. Well, you seem, although you're much more tan. How do you keep, you travel these places that seem so always sunny and like, or I miss, I guess Antarctica is not, well, it's bright, but not (laughs) hot. So (laughs) Um, how do you protect your kids from the sun? Yeah, I will say all of my kids definitely have that, that like that little bit of Filipino that they have goes a long way with them. So I can get away with not being obsessive on the sunscreen for me i'm almost always in a hat face sunscreen hat always yeah. for me okay what kind of sunscreen and, just needs to know like what you recommend um, i i really like one called uh, australian gold it's like a tinted one oh yeah and it's yeah. reef safe so that's kind of what i've been using for the last little bit is 
Australian gold. All right. That's good to know. I need, I just need some tips. Um, <laughs> we're heading to Fiji. I told you in a few weeks. And well, I was oh like, where, where are you going? Where are you going in Fiji? Do you know where we're going? At, uh, we're going to Suva. Su- well, Savu Savu. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, we're, we like to stay on this little Island. This is our second time at this place. This resort we will be in a different villa, but it's so it's Savasi Island and it's just magical. Like I have you been, love- been there? Uh, we haven't been there that, to that area. We've been over to Suva, but I I love Fiji. G- Garrett and I we keep these like running lists of you know where where like the prettiest places there are, the best water, the best food, and Fiji to us yeah. is the nicest people, hands down. Yes, just oh, the Guatemala. loveliest. Oh, Guatemala is wonderful too. That's the best food I've ever had, ever. Like, oh really? So Would you, well, oh, it's, God. I, I I think that like volcanic soil. Makes like yeah. the freshest produce there. And then just their ceviche, like the way yeah, they prepare the huevos and the plantains and the, oh, everything I ate, I was like, this is amazing. And yeah, I'm not usually, I mean, I'm a foodie, good. but I don't really care. I'll just eat like not that picky. Are but, you? Like, I was like, good. Wait, did you just say you're not that picky? Well, last night, I mean, I'm picky like I'm a five-year-old. Like last night I had mac and cheese <laughs> at the premiere we went. We went to see the movie Unsung Hero last night. Just and, making uh, sure we're clarifying that. I had to shove some <laughs> cheese in my mouth. And I was like, there's no popcorn. I got to do something. So, yeah, I eat like a five-year-old, but yeah, so I'm picky, but I'm She's also calling not- you out. She's like, don't pretend that you're not picky. But I'm not like, I'm not like, it doesn't have to be gourmet or I won't eat. You know, I'm not right, like. Right, 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 right. This you is know, the woman who had not tried a peanut M&M until two years. It was disgusting. Ew. Like, that's too many flavors put together. Like chocolate and peanut butter? Like, no. I can't unless it's a crazy. Here she is talking about the huevos in Guatemala. This is probably why we have a Asia. I don't know that I can handle Asian food. Like I don't. I'll eat a lot of rice, but like I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. That's that's probably one of the things. That's it about sounds like you do eat like a five year old. Then like you want like separate things, not too many overwhelming. Yeah, she can't have flavors. the touching. If we go to the UK ah. or Australia or something, they can't do like my my kids won't do like the bangers and mash or. Um, they can't do uh, fish and chips. Like they'll do, they're like, where's the chicken nuggets? We need the chicken nuggets. And they have to be like round kind, you know, like we're, you know, <laughs> then we go to Australia and they eat the kangaroo. So yeah, I just, I don't know. Like they like the Vegemite, you know, I'm like. Well, when you different. travel, it is a little bit different. Yeah. And I made my whole family try when we were in Australia in 2017, I prepared everyone a piece of toast with Vegemite, lots of butter. And I was like, all right, guys, here we go. Three, two, one. And we all took a bite. And like two of us were like, oh, it's not bad. And the rest were like, eh. But sometimes I'll make them, sometimes I can convince them to try something new, but it's rare. My kids have definitely grown up with m- me being picky. So it's like a lot yeah. of great, kind of like chicken and steak. And that's, you know, we keep it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it, keep it separate. That, yeah. that, that's my five-year-old. He's still kind of there. I want to know, you guys did a video, I think, I don't know if it was recently, of Zanzibar? Yeah, last, so last t- summer. Uh-huh. Okay, that was last summer. So we were supposed to go last summer as well. We went to Zambia. Um, we did some mission work with World Vision. And then we, I have a cousin there. And we were, and then I was going to take them on a safari. Because I always planned like the year before my son graduated. And we were all together for the last time. Yeah. It would be an African safari. And so we were trying to find an African safari, but my husband and I have really been dreaming about Zanzibar for years, but we were deterred from it. Like all these people told us not to go. And it was hard. It was, it was turning out to be hard to plan to get there Mm -hmm. and pretty expensive. But some people said it was a little bizarre and maybe not worth it. So we didn't go. So tell me about, I need to know about Zanzibar. (laughs) Um, well, we've been twice and yeah, it is tricky to get to because you have to, I mean, you have to it's a hopper flight. Like you're not going to get very many international flights. I mean, I guess you go from like Kenya or Nairobi or something, but, um, and it's changed a lot. So we went back in, I think it was 2018 or 19. And then we went again last year. And when we were there, we just noticed how many people were there. Like the first time we went, there's these dolphins off the coast and you could get in a boat. You can charter a little boat and they'll take you and you can go swim with wild dolphins. And it's amazing. And then this time we went, there were, dozens of boats and it was uh, honestly we left we were like oh no 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 no! like this isn't what you do with wildlife you don't just chase wildlife Uh and have a thousand people around them and stuff so i uh i love zanzibar it's beautiful um but at least as far as like i think it's a great thing to add onto a safari if you want to get like a little bit of sunshine and beach to add onto a safari um i I think it's great um but if, if you're just looking for the beach you know, go to Fiji, go to Tahiti, go to the Caribbean, something like that. 
that was Maldives, as your son would say. Mal- yeah, <laughs> go to the Maldives, go to Seychelles. Sort That's of. always, yes, that, those, are, those are very high up on my bucket list, but they're just so far. And I'm like, I've got to have a job. I got to do like Dubai for a few days and hit the Maldives or like I yes. wanted to do maybe Zambia and Seychelles yes. or something like that. But yeah, tagging it onto your Africa trip is a great, is a great idea. Yeah. Cause you're already over there, right? It's just, you yeah, you're already over trip. there, but you do like, there's no like easy flights. It was going to take us like, easy flights. Easy flights to Seychelles. Three hours. You, yeah. You will. Oh. And you have to go, you have to go through Dubai or Qatar through Doha, no matter what to get to okay. Maldives or Seychelles pretty much. There's yeah, like, you can't fly part. from from uh, you know Kilimanjaro or Nairobi directly there so it's you got to go through the Middle East which is kind of a pain mm. have you guys done Victoria Falls have you done Zambia we have yeah have you done yeah. uh we did well we did we did both we did Zimbabwe and uh Zambia we've done okay both sides we did it I we love did it. it there I think we did it the first we did it the same time of year I think we did it the same time of year each time we did it in 2019 and then we did it again in 2023 and the first time we went there were in a drought and um we could see the falls and it was like amazing to see all the rocks and the waters. And you know, yeah. it was like, wow, we showed up last year and we were like drenched, like from the water. It oh, was so it was red year. And the amount of water, cause they call it the thunder that what the smoke that thunders. So you can see like the puffs of like mist going up in the air from a yeah. distance. It looks yeah. like smoke. And, and so it was so interesting to be there and be like, we got so drenched. I don't think my underwear have ever gotten so wet from like <laughs> this rain or something, you know, like, at least, like I was like, this is not what I was expecting. I had to go like fix my phone. I had to like put it in a bag of rice and a blow dryer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, There's you know where to hide it. Like, rent. And you're not that, like you're close, but not that close. Like the 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 mist goes very far. Oh my gosh, I did not, because the first time we were there, that did not happen. So this, we're there with the kids. The, the, we brought our two little ones this time. We'd only brought the oldest one that time. And we were like, this is not, you can't even see it. Like we're trying to like look through the the <laughs> mist. And we're like, what? <sighs> But it's so it's so magical either way. I think it's it's really and that was on the Zambia side. Yeah, we do the Zambia side because yeah. there's a really okay. great resort. Oh, what's it called? Avanti, um, okay. which has the uh, zebras by the pool and oh, yeah, giraffes yeah, 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 on the yeah, property yeah. and that kind of Amazing. thing. And so then you just walk across the bridge, like you literally go through a little marketplace and you go across a little bridge and you're on you're in the falls. So we did. We went I to the Zambia Zambia side. It just to go meet with the elephants, just to go say hi to some elephants. But oh, I um, so I have a question for you. Um, I've got kids around the same age as yours. My oldest is um, 11 and I have two eight year old hmm. twins. So we have not oh, traveled okay. internationally with our kiddos since our oldest was the only one. And yep. so we just got our passports and the kids are so excited. Where is the number one place to go with kids? Where's your mm. most favorite? I think uh, I've got a few like different suggestions. I feel like it, um, if you're kind of beginners to international travel, I do think Central America is a great place to start. I think Belize is, you have the jungle, you have the ocean, they speak English, they take the US dollar. Belize is a good spot. I mean, Costa Rica, Guatemala, all of those places in Central America, they're not, you're not going to be dealing with like jet lag, but they're just, they're just great places and really culturally different, but beautiful and good food. Anyway, so I love that. Um, I also really think like our first travels were over to Southeast Asia. You, your money can go really far there. You know, the, the flight, the plane tickets going to be expensive, but the Thailand's or the Bali's or those yeah. sorts of places are such a cool place. And you get the adventure, you get different cultural experiences, there's service, uh, you know, projects you could do over there. So those are some of my favorite international spots that I would suggest if you're starting out. Or awesome. I really like Japan. I think Japan is also really cool. So very, um, if you're maybe like a little bit more nervous traveler, Japan is super safe, super clean, uh, very culturally different, but yeah. comfortable at the same time. So I also think All Japan right. is really cool. And sushi is so good. So I can eat, I can eat sushi. And she, Some- she eats sushi. So, she I does eat that. sushi. She's got I a great taste in the things home. she does eat. <laughs> I'm kind of the same. I'm like I'm like white girl sushi who like needs like cooked. Yeah. I, I can't do well, <laughs> unfortunately, which is a shame living in Hawaii. Yes, yes, I know, I know. It depends on who prepares it, right? If you trust the chef. Um, oh yeah, you're like in the land of the best sushi right now, other than you know in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. not in Nashville. You can't find it here. Don't come to Nashville. You won't be able to find mm-hmm. sushi. Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't even. And now if I'm like in like landlocked, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even try for shrimp or anything. No. no. Um. Okay. Wait, before we get into our, we have our, we want to talk about what you binge. I have, okay. I want to know your favorite place and your least favorite place that you've been. Ooh. Okay. 
Um, favorite place is New Zealand. I, I, that's my go-to. I think it's the most beautiful place on earth. I think. Which part? Which like, North um, Island, I, if I have to be very specific, I would probably say South Island, that Milford sound is just my favorite place in the whole wide world. I think it's so stunning. I think God purposely put the most beautiful place in the world so far away. <laughs> So it's it's a trek to get over there, but I love it so much, and I'd move there in a heartbeat if I could. Wow! All right, and then least favorite? Least favorite? Oh gosh, um, I you know there's there's actually a few places in the Caribbean that I just won't go back to. I, I think there's some places in the Caribbean where they don't love tourists. Um, that's why I love Fiji, you know. Like you see, there's some islands that they're like, come and you know you experience so much love and aloha in certain places. And then there were just places in the Caribbean. I'm like thinking of Antigua and a couple others that I'm like, I don't know. They just didn't seem happy to from like the TSA agent or like from like the customs agent until to the, like the customer people, like the, like the restaurant service. I just, I just didn't feel welcome. So. Okay. I interesting. And then I have one more. Okay. One more travel related um, for right now. Uh, it was there. I know you guys do a lot of like diving with the whales and like have seen a lot of creatures uh, yeah. on this earth. And what is your, like, what was your scariest animal encounter? Cause mine's dolphins. I don't know. When you said the thing about dolphins, I'm like, I hate, <laughs> I have, my unpopular opinion is that I don't like dolphins. Wait, I don't trust really? Them. It's so was, sad. That's crazy. I was, that's funny. Cause I was going to ask if you were going to shark dive in, in Fiji. Cause I think you're over by the I really epic. Dive. Dive. I won't, I won't, I won't do, uh, I won't do dolphins because what? here's the thing. Here's my reasoning. I, I feel like you're going to back me up after tell you. Okay, first of all, if you were a fan, do you know Sabrina Down Under? Do you ever see me do the movie Sabrina Down Under? I didn't see Sabrina Down Under, but now I'm okay. going to today. Yeah, so it's a movie we shot in Australia. <laughs> we shot it in mainly in like Hamilton Island, the Whit Sundays, and, and parts of it in like Surfer's Paradise. And yeah. um, we had to get into a tank with trained dolphins. And um, huh. they were pretty aggressive. And my friend was a mermaid, but she was also on her period. And the dolphins started like aggressively pushing her around and kind of like, Oh, it went up, it went up on its tail and sort of threatened her in a way. So they had to get her out of the water. I was in there and it was supposed to come up in front of me. I was supposed to grab its fin. And I mean, this is like, look, these are dolphins that are trained, which, you know, is probably not right. 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 A while ago came up in front of me and grabbed the fin and it was supposed to like, take me for a ride. Like it was like my magic made the dolphin help me get to the whatever. Right. And the dolphin would come up and I would hold on to it and it would drag me under and then it would charge back at me really fast. Okay. And I just learned that they're super territorial. And like, I, I heard, you know, you hear stories of like surfers where they like bump you to the shore, like, oh, they saved me. They moved me. No, no, no. They got you out of their, pl- out of their way. And they're out like, way. it went through a ring at my head while I was doing an interview on the dock or something. And I was like, and I looked at it and the trainer was like, don't you look at him. He can't, you can't look him in the eye. And I was like, I don't like these things. <laughs> Oh, how funny. Well, you have proper PTSD from dolphins, from <laughs> captive dolphins. Dolphins are my favorite. I love them. There's this boat in the Bahamas where you can go and swim with a pod of spotted dolphins and they oh. love humans and they're like little puppy dogs and the boat comes out and they just come up to the boat and they're like, play with me, play with me, play with me. And you run oh. around and, and we'll have like a little, like my husband wears like a little buff kind of thing and he'll play pass with the dolphins and they're just puppy dogs and that's oh. one of our favorite experiences. Oh Look, my now Amanda's going to do that. Her birthday's next week. I can't wait. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> no, I'll send you <laughs> the info for happens. it. It's the best. So, um, okay, wait. Scariest wildlife experience? Gosh. Um, I'm trying to think of. Like the gorillas in Rwanda. How was that? Because I've been asked. The gorillas, are, the gorillas are amazing. Amazing. Really? And they're intimidating. But you, you go and the first thing they do is they teach you like gorilla language. So when you go up to them, you have to properly, like you have to introduce yourself and you, you do these grunts and you're like, <clears throat> and so you have to keep doing that. And then I, I can't remember. There's a few others that if, and, but with those, like you do not look them in the eyes and you don't oh. like, so, so there's a lot of like rules and stuff with the gorillas, but those are out of this world, incredible creatures. Cause they're so like us, but not. Mm-hmm. And so strong, the silverbacks are everything. Anyway, that that's probably one of my favorite experiences, but we had, um, we, I, I just think we've, we've done so much safari and there have been like a few instances where we've been intense. And one night I thought we had hyenas outside and it, 
anyway, it was a long story, but it wasn't hyenas. It was a, just a tarp making noise. And I, we'd been in safari oh. for like, <laughs> we'd been in safari for maybe two one, months. Like that's a lot of safari, right? Oh and we were camping and we know so much about these animals. And one night I wake up and I just smell the worst smell. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, oh, that's, that's scat. That's, that's a carnivore's poop. That is not like mm-hmm. an herb. So I'm like freaking out and can't get a hold of our guide on the walkie talkie. And I hear something cr- cranking outside and I am petrified thinking, you know, like it's just a tent and there's hippos right there. There's crocodiles outside, but I was like positive. It was hyenas. And, um, I like pull, start to get the kids and like pull them into my bed. And then I lift up little baby Callie and I realize, Oh, it's not a hyena. It's my poopy child. Oh. <laughs> and that is the best story. <laughs> And I legit, I can't tell you how scared I was thinking hyenas were going to get into our tent and eat us. And it was, it was, and then it was the wind like brushing the tarp. But anyway, that's, that was like one of the most scared moments of safari at least. (laughs) That is, that's an incredible story. That's so good. That's so funny. So Amanda, you know, like resolutions have come and gone at this point and a lot of them have dwindled down. Well, one of mine was to do less takeout. And to cook at home more. But of course, you know, I haven't really been that consistent. Yeah, me neither. I was right there with you and uh, not now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, who has the time or the patience to meal prep and grocery shop? So I was very excited to learn about Home Chef. Yes, I am so excited about Home Chef because they're different from all the other meal kit brands. Yes, Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes conveniently delivered to your doorstep, and it simplifies the whole cooking process. Yeah, so whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions or speedy recipes ready in less than 30 minutes, I do like those. Mm -hmm. Oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes, Home Chef has you and the entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. Yeah, and Home Chef has over 30 options every week, so it makes it really easy to serve a variety of different dietary needs, and you don't have to worry about what to make ahead of time. It's just there. Yeah, it's convenient. It's economical, too. Home Chef customers save an average of 86 per month on groceries. That's, That's $86, really by the way. $86 a, a month on groceries. <laughs> That's a lot but of money. For a, limited, for a limited time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals plus free shipping on your first box and... Free dessert for life. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, you heard me right. Free dessert for life as long as you're an active subscriber. So all you have to do is go to homechef.com slash WWB. That's homechef.com slash WWB for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. And free dessert, people. Homechef.com slash WWB. Get your desserts. So, okay. So what are you, so let's talk about binging. Um, what are you into? What do you like? Like, I mean, you're on these trips for long amounts of times. It seems that, you know, like you go somewhere remote, like Antarctica, are you bringing iPad? Are you watching shows? Are you reading books? Like what is, um, I, I definitely love to always have a good show or book that I'm into. And if honestly, for me, it's always that like, you're on these, hopper flights and so you need something to listen to that that sometimes you can't like look down and read a book so I do a lot of audiobooks and it's always just these you know fiction stories the the escapes you know I just read the popular uh what's it called the fourth wing series and that was a lot of fun and and then I did the um um what else and then shows I've always got a good show I've just started watching traders have you guys watched traders Oh no. no! On Peacock. Do you know what it is? Wait, I feel like I just saw this preview, but I can't remember. I have seen the trailer for one, but not like. Have I'm you ever watching. played the game Mafia? Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically, um, they go up into a castle in Scotland, and it's like two week long mafia. So every night they're like killing people, and they have to figure out who it is. So the U.S. version, they take. Uh, they take reality stars. So they bring someone from Housewives. They bring someone from uh, Survivor. They bring people from Dancing with the Stars. So they have just, you know, people that people know. And then they play mafia with them. And that's kind of been a show that I like to have on in the background. I I never really get to sit down and watch a show. So I just kind of have it in the background. I can't, there's only a few shows that I get to like sit down and like really watch like like a Ted Lasso or something. 
Is it? Yeah. So do you tend to do more reality because it has to be sort of background noise? Um, well, I can, you know, like my, one of my favorite shows is I love scandal and I love revenge. And those are two shows that I can just have going on in the background and I don't need to like sit and watch it. You know, I can cook yeah. dinner to those sorts of shows. Okay. Or the what office. About, so you don't read a lot. Of, so you don't bring a lot of books with you on the trips and stuff. No, 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 no. So it's, yeah. It's, if I, if I am listening to a book, it, or if I am doing a book, it's an audio book for sure. An audio book. Do you, how, like how light do you pack for every, do you pack differently for every trip or do you? No, I literally pack the same <laughs> for three months, our three month summer vacation that I do for a week away. So okay. for me, it's just a carry on bag, the kids. And now, now we're kind of in this carry on bag phase where everyone just has a carry on bag and that's that. And they all so pull their own now. Laundry. And now they all pull their own, which which is great. But so last summer we all did carry ons and it was great. But my kids can't lift bags on the, um, you know, the, the security scale. thing, and they can't lift them in the overhead bin. So I realize oh, okay. all of a sudden, like getting on the plane, it's kind of chaos because I'm like, ugh, you know, five <laughs> times lifting up bags. It's a it's a little much. But you know, at the end of the day, if you're not losing your luggage, I guess it's worth it. That's Amen. true. That is true. Oh, I just went, oh my gosh. I just, you just reminded me, I just had the most traumatic, not traumatic, but my flying experience. I was going to meet some girlfriends in St. Lucia for this trip we'd planned for a while. And yeah. I was, oh my gosh, I was supposed to leave on Wednesday night. I was supposed to get a flight to New York, spend the night at JFK and then jump a jet blue, like direct flight to the Island with my friends. Cause I kind of wanted to go with them. I was going to come back through Atlanta to Nashville, but I wanted to like be on the flight with them and I had to connect anyway. So I figured I might as well go up there and do yeah. the night over. Well, bad weather postponed my flight, postponed it, postponed it. I'm in the airport. And then they were like, 7.30 tomorrow, it'll leave. So I was going to miss the connection with the girls. So then I rerouted through Charlotte in the morning. So I came home, slept, kind of repacked a little. I was like, all right, go to the airport, 5 a.m. They were like, you're too late to check your bag. I was like five minutes late. And not even that. They kept saying 45 minutes before, but I think because I was international, it was more than that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So they would not let me on the plane, and I was so upset. So they were like, "The next flight leaves tomorrow morning," and I was like, "No!" And there was no way for me to find another route. So the next day, I had to get up at the same time. I got up like really early, uh, like, like, yeah, I was at the airport at four for the five thirty flight, like, and then jumped on a plane and went to meet my friends. And so I was, and I got terrible, terrible sunburn that's still like peeling like crazy. So that's why I was asking about your sunscreen. <laughs> um, but yeah, like. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. So then I was like, I repacked into, cause I was like, do I leave my bag behind? Because the whole reason was my bag was late. I could have jumped on the plane. It was right there. Right, 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 right. I, yeah. And no, I made the mistake. So like, I've had that happen oh, yeah, before too. And, yeah. With, with the bags, the, there's always so much crap that happens with that. And, and now I've just realized <laughs> less is more always. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, like that's what I was like. Literally, I already had in my carry on. I had flip flops, a beach cover, and a bathing suit because we were going to catch a helicopter to the resort. We were going to stay at the Sandals Resort, and we were going to catch a helicopter there. So they were like, you know, we'll leave your bags behind until later. So I was like, oh, I'll have my bathing suit, my flip flops. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, and I always have a toothbrush with me too. And I was like, in case I get stuck somewhere. And I was like, do I need to bring anything else? Like, can I just yeah. jump on this plane with my toothbrush? I have three girlfriends that are about my same size. You know, totally. I don't need anything. Flops I, and I, left it. On. I was like, I, you know what? <laughs> but, honestly, but, I don't, then what would you do with your luggage? Like, did you have someone there I that could come I'd driven myself to the airport. Oh, you had your car. So you could, you I could have put your, I didn't think about it until after I called my girlfriends. I'd already canceled the flight. Cause they said to rebook. I had to cancel. Uh, so that was my mistake was that I was like, Oh, I already canceled. Cause then I was like, I also had my beach bag in my suitcase. So I, Oh, it, it like, that one day that I stayed here, I like literally planted a garden. I, oh my gosh, the stuff I, I got a workout in that I was, you know, all these things that I got done that I wasn't expecting on this random day I had here. But I, I was like, all I could think the whole day was if I'd taken my beach bag out and I had my carry on and I grabbed a dress and maybe a few more bathing suits and some underwear, I would have been set. And you made I, I should have just done it. I would have had one more day at the beach but I didn't No, should have, could have, would have. We like, we had all our carry ons for last year. And when we were checking it, we were in actually in Zanzibar and they were saying that our carry ons were too big. And they're like, you have to check them. And I was like, but I didn't like, I know they would have fit. And I just didn't want to fight with the agent. And against my better judgment, I let them take my husband kept his bag. Cause it was like camera gear, but they took me and the kids bags and they got lost and I knew they would get lost and I knew it. And I knew it. And and then we didn't have clothes for the next like five days. And it, oh you know. no. Oh, that's so hard. 
Um, so yeah, because I always take like my carry on always has an iPad with a billion shows that I never watch and okay. a book that I probably will never read. And like ultimately, what I'll do is I'll play solitaire on my phone, like the whole flight, or you know. And then I get there and I think I'm I I was like St. Lucia for three days. I was like I'm bringing two books. I'm going to get so much reading done. I was with my girlfriends. I wasn't going to spend any time reading. What was I think? I read the same thing twice. Like yeah, I don't, I'm not. <laughs> I would rather sit and chat and hang. Thick book too. It was so thick. <laughs> But so, the, so, um, all right. So we have these questions we always ask our guests. Okay. Um, so, uh, is there a movie you feel like you should have watched, but you haven't yet? Well, I, a lot of times we miss the big, the big box office stuff. Cause we're traveling abroad over the summers. Like I missed Oppenheimer and now it's one of those movies that I don't want to watch it on my laptop. And I, we don't have like a big, you know, we don't have like a home theater or anything. So now I'm like, well, I miss the boat. Like um, until I can like go see happening. a movie like that in the theater, then I'm you know well. I miss but it. did you catch Barbie? I did catch Barbie. We did okay. catch Barbie. Barbie was still in theater, and that was a fun one. And that one's an easy one. Oppenheimer is a commitment. <laughs> it's a little bit. Yeah, different. I think it's it's all yeah. I think I think a lot of those just like really graphic sounds, audio visual. You know what I mean? Like that's what you yeah. want to see that in the in the theater. And and now that I can, I'm like eh, I don't really care that much. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, what about a TV villain that you love to hate? You say you watch a lot of these like revenge. And um, stuff. I would. Yeah. But you know, when, when I saw that question to me, the first person I thought of was Toby from the office. I <laughs> love him and uh-uh. hate him so much. Cause I feel like everybody has yeah. those Toby's in their life where you're like, you're the worst. Like, <laughs> I, Toby, I, like I think Toby's played by, isn't that the one played by Paul Lieberstein? He's um he's the showrunner. He's the writer of the Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. He's like a writer. And he's just the best character. He's the best character. But Michael hates him so much. And you just hate him. And I mean, he walks into the room and, and you're just like, anyway. And so now Garrett and I have this thing where there are certain people that are just so rulesy. A lot of times it's like people on airline that work at airports that you're just like, oh, it's a Toby who just is like. All right, Toby. People these oh, it's so funny. My kids have been calling me Karen, but I think Toby's a better one. But to- Toby, well, to- yeah, Toby's for the guys, I guess. Karen's for the girls. Paul's a really nice guy. Paul wrote on uh clarissa my first show so oh did he oh there you go really Small nice world. well you can yeah. tell him he's my favorite character to love and hate <laughs> yeah he's awesome he's awesome and funny uh story though angela uh, who plays angela was his yeah. um his sister-in-law when they started the show and then oh, wasn't when they know that. <laughs> yeah. does i have i did listen to a few episodes of their podcast that she did with jenna fisher where they kind yeah. of go through the episodes and that's super funny to hear the casting of so many people, like, I think, I think, um, Phyllis was like a casting director. So, you know, like every, oh, yeah, home, like half, and she half the characters on that, sh- yeah, half the characters on the show, like, aren't even actors or weren't actors yeah. at the time. Mindy, I think might've been a writer too, before she was an actor. Yeah, I think she was it. a writer and same with BJ, like all of them. Anyway, oh, that's yeah. one of our favorites. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay. Do you have a favorite book genre? Uh, right now it's just the escapes. The, 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 whatever's going to get me out of, out of this world and into another one. So a fiction, so always a fiction. Uh, yeah, fiction. And, and weirdly, I don't know, I would never would have called myself a fantasy person, but if I kind of list off a lot of the books that I've been liking lately, it's these fantasies. So Amanda can tell you about my girl. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> She's into vampire romance. So maybe she. No, can- vampires, werewolves. Vampire oh, werewolves. sorry. Werewolves. Werewolf romance. You know. Totally different. But no. I love any kind of fantasy fiction, whatever. I'll okay. read. Okay. Yeah. Did you did you read the the fairy one? I've I've been trying to start the fairy the the crown of thorn and roses. That oh, one. It, you oh. haven't started it yet. And I'm about to. I was about to. It was going to be my next one. You're gonna love it. Okay. Well, gonna, I like it. All right. Go ahead and get all four. You're gonna love. It. I feel like I need to do okay. that. I feel like that would be one I like too. Yes. I, I think every woman would like it. I, I'm, I don't actually know any men who've read them, which is yeah. interesting because there is a lot in them. Like, I feel like it's kind of intense. It's a bit actiony, but they're so good. You okay. will love it. Well, I'm going to start the journey. I can't wait. Yeah. It's a good one. Awesome. All right. So Jessica, what is your go-to karaoke song? Ooh, go-to karaoke song? Ah. Uh, um... Let's think. I, I, I'm just thinking of the ones that I've like totally butchered, but I 
did one recently and we, it was gravity from wicked which can you think of a worse song to try to to try to but it's sing? so good it's such a good song and you're just belting it and you're just terrible like there's no way around it well it's it's adina and Chris, what are you gonna yeah, do? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's—I <laughs> think that was the last one of the last ones that I did. I love a good karaoke night. That's a good one. Um, uh, is there a reboot that you liked better than the original? A reboot that I liked better than the original. I mean, well, I mean, I guess it's a sequel. I was gonna say Top Gun, but Top Gun's kind of a sequel and not a reboot. Um. Mm. Oh, in Top Guns, you like the original better than the? No, 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 no. I like the sequel better than the original. Like, oh, yeah. I think the Top oh, yeah, Maverick. years ago, whatever, yeah, so is good. out of control. Just one of the best, uh, the best movie theater experiences I've ever yes. had was. Seeing I was that. about to go, woo, woo. Oh, don't mind my. Sorry, <laughs> I got charcoal. <laughs> I have this charcoal. Ma- my mom travels a lot, like you do. My mom is my mom is you in like forty years. But she brought oh, me back really? some eyeliner from Egypt, like the way we have had use it. And it dumped on me. Well, this is because I do my makeup right here and then I move it all and it got like all over me. <laughs> so I've got charcoal on my boobs. So funny. That's the story of my life. Yeah, There's my mom, my mom calls my herself instead of, instead of bucket list family, my mom is a boomerang grandparent. So she's got <laughs> 10 grandkids all around the world. Aww. Two daughters that live in Paris, me in Nashville, three in New York, and like one in San Diego. And so she bounces around. She's got a van for when she's in the U.S. And then she has an apartment in Paris, and she bounces all around Europe. Like she'll take a boat in Turkey, and she goes. What again? And And is she is she married? Is she flying solo? She is. Her her and her husband, my stepdad, they um they travel the world, and he goes on skiing adventures, and she loves going to the beach or sailing or like, and they go to graves. I love you know, October fast. I mean, they bounce around the, the two days it, as opposed to you guys, which it seems like you do more big blocks. They sort yeah, of yeah, like yeah. Two, two days here, two days here. And they literally wow. they'll stay at their apartment in Paris and they'll go all around. Like they're in Courcheval and they're in, you know, Switzerland and Berlin and down to Italy and over to Turkey and Morocco. And like, they bounce around, then they come back to the States for a little while. And so, Oh my gosh, they just rage. I should, wow, that's I'll amazing. you on her Instagram so you can yeah, see. Yeah, send me her Instagram. I want to see it. That's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I will. All right, wait, I got two more questions for you. What's your first concert? My first concert, my mom was a massive um, Michael Bolton fan. And yeah. we would always go to Michael Bolton concerts. And then also she was an oldies fan. So the and we lived, I grew up in Colorado. We'd have these cool one of five concerts that the radio station put on. And it was like the Beach Boys and the Temptations and all of those kind of oldies groups, the Supremes. And and we would go to the, those were the concerts that I went to. I think every summer was a Michael Bolton and like an oldies concert. Nice. My aunt went through a Michael Bolton stage. I have a vivid memory of one Thanksgiving of waking up every single morning for like a week to her getting ready and just Michael Bolton blaring. And it wasn't, it was like one of those like single track cassette yeah. tapes. You know? so there's only like three yeah. songs on it. It was the same three songs over and over again. And I, it's just ingrained in me now, this like epic <laughs> early 90s His voice morning. is so lovely. But yeah, that is so not Now when I hear his voice, it's just, it's so dated. But I love him. I have a special place <laughs> in my heart for Michael Bolton. I do too. It's fair. That's me yeah. and Billy Joel going to his last concert. Um, oh, cool. What would well his last one at MSG at Madison Square Garden in New York? Oh, uh, awesome! Maybe not his last. Ever. I was like, oh, no, he's, he's ending his residency in New York. He's been doing like oh, a, every okay, month, cool. like, like three or four oh, years wow. or something. Um, what would you like your epitaph to say? This is a tough one, but this is hard. Could be that funny. is a hard question. I I would just say, I, I at least right now I'm on this kick of. Whoever I spend my time with, I want, I want to feel better after I spend time with somebody. So I want people to feel better about themselves by after having me around. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I hope people feel better. Um, I hope, like, I hope I bring up the best out in every. I hope I bring the best out in everybody because yeah. I've tried to now put myself in line with people who just bring out the best in others. And that's what I hope people will say. There you go. Like reflecting someone's light or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Amanda's going to ask you some this or that. Hang on. Okay. Technology impaired. You want me to do it? (laughs) Yeah. If you got them in front of me, I can do it. All right. Rosé or Froze? Uh, I don't drink. 
at all. Ah, there you go. All right, so that that answers that. Boo. <laughs> no. no mocktails for life. <laughs> yeah, mocktails yeah. for life. They say mocktails are like making a huge right yeah. now. Like more people are drinking mocktails than cocktails, actually. Oh, really? Alcohol. Yeah, that it's become like a huge that people. I don't know. I because I don't like to drink much either. Like last night we went out and like I didn't have a single. I had a lot of seltzer water. <laughs> yeah. Well, they make some really yummy, out. like and like kind of healthy tonic drinks now mm-hmm. that you can get at places. Yeah, those are kind of my jam. Yeah, I, I know. I agree. Um, read the book or watch the movie. <sighs> oh, jeez. Uh, a movie. Okay. Um, drive or be driven. Drive. Me too. Brunch or happy hour. Brunch. Spotify or Apple Music. Spotify. All right. Oh, and then do you have your phone nearby? Because we like to judge people <laughs> by asking how many unread emails they have in their inbox. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. And with you, I'm super There's, curious because I'm at That is a great question. Um, no, I oh seven. I just clicked on it. Seven. Uh, oh, now it's, it's okay, it's twenty it's twenty seven since this podcast. I, started. But like, oh my gosh, you're my girl. Yeah, I'm yeah. at no, I, it's making me nervous. You gotta keep it clean. I yeah. or or like text messages. When I say people have hundreds of text messages on my phone, I'm like, how do you live with yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding. Watch this. Watch this. Go ahead. What are you at, Amanda, today? I don't know if I want to tell you. I, I'm gonna. Can I guess? Okay, you can guess. I'm gonna say it's upwards of forty-two thousand emails. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about text messages, though? Oh, Wait, I have. I, well, only what I've missed while we've been on here. I stay on top of my uh, texts, but okay. I'm at forty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-five. I was almost spot on. How did I know that? Because you know what? Why do you just delete? <laughs> well, now you're too far. Now, honestly, you need a new email address is what you need. To <laughs> That's start what fresh, I keep saying. it clean. I, it's a system, though. I, I explain this a lot because it, it blows people's minds. But, like, I really don't. How miss do you emails. not? You don't miss emails. I really don't. Like, I, I most of the ones that are unread are just like junk. And so I just skip over them. Right. But and people know not afraid. to send them to you. <laughs> But you just I need to have you need to have your junk school. email, and then you have your email. And I do unsubscribe a lot. So my number, I would say, has gone down in the last two years since Melissa no, has. In the last week, it's got up like ten thousand. So this it's is been not- two weeks. It's been two weeks, and That's it's been it's but it's gone up like ten thousand, like maybe five thousand. I don't know. You were like at thirty two thousand. Thirty seven, I, I believe, at the last. Thirty seven. Okay, so we only went up five thousand. Yeah, like- that's that's not bad. <laughs> every every week that's gonna be <laughs> but, with the, but if you emailed me i would have emailed you back amanda we gotta work on this that all right well so um, i want to ask you one other thing um people like okay so when we went to guatemala or like you said you're going to china like people a lot of people especially in our country are afraid of other places right it feels like there's a lot of fear yeah. factor of yeah. traveling of food of safety especially how do you respond to people that say, like, when you said China, I was like, oh, is it safe to go? Like, my first instinct right. was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that as a safe place to travel. But, like, how do you respond to that? Or what do you think about that? Um, I, I think the more, honestly, every time I see comments like that, um, the I, I to me, it just shows people that aren't well-traveled or haven't gotten out of the world, uh, haven't traveled at all. Um, I remember early on, um, you know, my mother-in-law was, which is funny. She is an avid traveler. She's actually a professional traveler as well, but she was so nervous for us, which I get like, you're just nervous for your kids. And she was like, you can't go to Turkey. Like don't go to Turkey. (laughs) And it's funny because the two, two, I would say there's been two countries that I have actually been afraid to go to Turkey and Rwanda. And I kid you not, both of those countries are in my top five, like best places on earth. Turkey just so happens to have probably after Fiji, the nicest people on this planet love children so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I was laughing because, um, you know, my mother-in-law had a, had like a house explode because they had a meth explosion, like two doors down. Oh, and I, wow. you know, and, and this is just in like, this is just in suburbia, Arizona. And, you know, anyway, so I guess that my point is like stuff happens everywhere you live. Like there's bad stuff I have to think everywhere. A lot. And so, yeah. you know, you do your best research and you go by your mama gut and your instincts and you, you know, you try to stay as safe as possible, but there's so much goodness out there. And I feel bad for people who are too afraid to, to 
see the world because as soon as you do, you realize the goodness and, and the wonderful people yeah. that exist out there. That's interesting. I, you know, I'm from New York and grew up like as a teenager in New York city, riding the subways and everyone is afraid to go to, you know, you hear people like, Oh yeah. Up in, like if people haven't been in New York, they don't understand. They're like, what was that? Da- like, how is that? Like, isn't that scary? Aren't people getting stabbed on the subway all the time shoved in the, I'm like, no, like you, you, you learn to be safe wherever you are. You learn to totally. watch your back or not stand too close to the track or not go down a dark alley in the middle of the night, you know, or, you know, that kind of thing. You, you know, you be aware of your surroundings and whatnot everywhere you go, like in downtown everywhere, Nashville. Everywhere, everywhere you go, especially with kids, you know, so I'm, I don't know what people think, but I'm not an idiot and I am very close to my kids, especially in airports and it at busy tourist attractions, you know, like we're all hands on deck, holding hands, you know, like making sure that everyone is close and things are safe. But at the end of the day, um, the experiences and the people you meet, it's all worth it. So I, and, and I, and if people will just push themselves a little bit out of the comfort zone and see what scariness is out there, they'll realize that it's a beautiful world. Yeah. It's kind of like stepping out of your house at night. Like sometimes I'm afraid in my house because I think someone's watching or something's outside. <laughs> and then you go outside at night and you're like, Oh, it's perfectly fine out here. There's nobody in the bushes, it's you know, yeah. it's kind of like that, right? your comfort zone for a second. And you're, you realize that it's not as scary as it all seems. Well, thank totally. you so much for being here. This is so wonderful. Everyone can go get your book, the national geographic bucket list family travel book, which has, I love that you put like plans in there for families so they can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A bunch of good itineraries. That's awesome. I'm going to go check one out right now and book my travel for later this year. So. Well, hopefully we'll see each other someday in person. I want to do the pandas. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the pandas. I had no idea you were in Nashville. We, I was in Nashville on my book tour, and I totally would have hit you guys up. Well, I just saw that. Yeah, I just saw that you were here. Oh, how did I miss that? I know we did a we we tried to do something bucket listy in every city, and so we rented out uh, FGL house in Nashville and had some country line dancers come and teach us how to line dance. And it was honestly, it was the best. It was so fun. <laughs> That's I'm fun. So sold on country line dancing. I thought it was so fun. I still haven't. That's something I haven't done yet. I oh, you haven't do done it. Oh my we gosh, do I'll come. I'll come back to Nashville in a heartbeat. Yeah. So fun. Let's do that. Next time we'll get you on the Hell on Wheels, which is our favorite like military bus that goes up and down Broadway. And it just, uh, <laughs> you just dance. And oh my God. Never had the party the bus experience. experience. It's an experience. It's like having your own dance floor <laughs> in a truck. It's really yeah. fun. Ooh, I want, that sounds like a blast. Yeah. Well, it I would love fun. to go back there. So many wonderful people in Nashville too. So. Well, I hope we get to travel someday together. I would love to. Some of your yeah, itineraries along. I will. Thank will. you again for being here. This was so wonderful. Yeah, of course, it was like, great to chat. We'll be in touch. Well, I'll I'll play play list. So I was so excited to have you on here. And thank you again. And uh, see you soon on some travels. Okay, cool. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Womanette, what? Womanette, bitch.